grace. I've been saved by grace. My name is in the book of life, and my sins are washed away. Saved by grace. I've been saved by grace. It's not what I deserve, but I'm saved by grace. This is not without blood, and we're so glad you joined us again tonight as we study God's Word together. Thank you for allowing us to come into your living room or your bedroom or kitchen or wherever you may be. We uh, do not take lightly the time that you donate to watch us, to uh, support us, to uh, <clears throat> give us words of encouragement, to uh, tell people on the panel or to write to them. You know, I, I saw you on TV the other night. I like what you said. You know, a, a word of encouragement go, goes a tremendous long way, uh, not only for us, but for the body of Christ, because we are supposed to be encouragers of one another. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to be condemners, but encouragers. And I'm going to start off uh, tonight reading uh, one passage out of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. It says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. <clears throat> As we have said, if you watched any of our programs, we believe and we teach that submission within the body of Christ is horizontal. It, it, it is strictly on a level basis. There's no big I and little you. There's no big me and little you. We are all the same. Uh, God is not uh, going to have different levels of authority in his body. He is no respecter of persons. So he's not going to elevate here and say, well, your gift is down here, but I'm the one who gave it to you, but your gift is still down here. If he gave it to us, we're all equal. If he called us, we're all equal. We're called to a function, not to a title, but we're called to a function within the body of Christ. We mentioned several times that God is the head of the church, that he is not a figurehead. Now that is where he has been so long as a figurehead. But we proclaim that he should be the daily operating head. Now, I'll give you a check and balance, <clears throat> and I'll also present this to the panel. Let me give you a good way to determine whether or not God is the operating head of your church, the body of believers that you go to church with, or whether or not you have brought in civil authority and mixed it with God's governmental authority, of him being ahead. I'll use this as an example. <clears throat> when somebody in the body of Christ falls, who is to supply the discipline? If you think it that you have the right to supply discipline to a fellow brother, tell me where you got it from. That's good. If you think you have the right to judge your fellow brother so you can discipline him, tell me where you got it from. If you think you can judge a fellow brother's heart like the Holy Spirit can judge my heart, tell me where you got it from. Give me chapter and verse. Tell me what basis you are doing this discipline on. So what we say is, well, God is the head, but then I am taking over this area of discipline because he's in heaven and I'm down here and I know what that, I know how much that brother is hurt. You know, go back. Is the Holy Spirit capable and does he have the authority and the right or does church leaders have the authority and responsibility for discipline. If they do, then that is a usurped authority, I think, usurping God's authority 
and giving it to man's authority. Now, I have not discussed this with the panel, so, you know, it's according to what the Holy Spirit gives them as an example, and they can disagree with me if they would like, you know. I don't put any restrictions on their comments, on what they say, on their thoughts, but the only restriction that we place on anybody coming on the panel is back it up with God's Word. Back it up with scriptural example in God's Word. So who is supposed to prune? Who is supposed to discipline? Who is spiritual authority? Now, if you want to get to the nuts and bolts of spiritual authority, you cannot do it unless you touch the topic of discipline. Now, that's where we're coming at from tonight. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your authority in our life, Lord. I thank you that there's not man between me and you. And Father, that, that your grace doesn't flow through man to get to me, nor does my petition go through man to get to you. Father, it's a direct relationship based on the blood of Jesus on his finished work. Praise God. And thank you, Lord that you've given us this opportunity to share truth with the body of Christ. Anoint us to speak. Anoint all of us to hear, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Who wants to be first? Anybody? <laughs> oh, you want me to keep talking? I've got it. I'm in agreement with what you're saying. And Paul even talks about when he's judging them. This is where we got into the whole court thing. I think we talked off camera a little bit. But right. he says, well, you're going to judge angels. You know, how much more can you judge among yourselves about things? And it goes back to allowing the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to be right. the one in charge who makes these decisions. It seems right. good to us in the Holy Ghost to not put any more of this on you. And so... He's saying don't sue somebody and take them to court and use civil authority to bring reproach and judgment upon them. Mm -hmm. But let's just allow the Holy Spirit to do what it's going to do. Right. And not saying, oh, you set yourself up as judge. Let's have a panel. Let's bring in the counselors and let them sit here and judge you. Um, and I don't know how many of you have ever had to go before the board to get your ministerial license. You know, right. But they're all <laughs> wanting to ask you these questions. And Are you going to be a missionary? You guys probably had to do this. And, you, and they want to... You go before the missions council, you know, and then they have to test whether or not you qualify to be. That's not part of how God does it. I mm -hmm. mean, if you're in an organization and they're wanting to build a company, that's fine. But we're talking about allowing the Holy Spirit to be the judge. Mm -hmm. And that's the dominion that we spoke on the last broadcast, and I'm in 100% agreement. I don't think you can find it in the Bible mm -hmm. where somebody falls and you've got special authority to take it upon yourself to punish their neglect or their failure even if it was done against you well if it's a sin and all of it would be because they failed mm -hmm. who took the punishment for our sin how could i possibly he that was without can sin. i right. can now in our court system we have a term called d double jeopardy you cannot mm -hmm. be charged with the same crime twice right. am i not doing that to my brother trying to punish him twice for what Jesus took the guilt and the punishment for my sin. He had to have paid for that sin already because right. if he only paid for all the sins That's that good. were committed then well, we're all we're all doomed. Right. We're so he had to have paid for future sins right. as well as past sins and if he's already paid for that sin you can't charge him for the same crime twice. Right. Again that's not a, a uh, license to yeah. sin Right. but when you the way Presley described it in the woman at the well. Yeah. Yeah. She's not going to get up and go out and sin yeah. after that kind of right. display of grace. Right. Right. And if we handle it properly, when someone falls in the kingdom, and we've mentioned this in the last couple, but there's not a vacancy now. Right. They've fallen and the wall, the line is weakened. Right. So we comfort and strengthen our brethren. Right. We come to their aid. We help them back to the kingdom. And as far as punishment, God deals with the punishment. Well, well, if, if, <clears throat> this is where I'm coming from. If God calls and we recognize and if we recognize in the body that He calls individuals to functions and to do certain functions, if He calls, if He guides us and we want His guidance and His His uh, 
on a daily basis if He leads us here and there. If He empowers us. If He anoints us. Can He not discipline? Is He going to abrogate the authority to discipline us to man? Presley? Yeah, I just got a few scriptures. Um, it's perfect for this. It's Galatians chapter 1, verse 1. And I'm, I'm just going to go through this. Um, how, I got some of it highlighted. I'm going to go through verse 10 and then 11 and 12. But it says this, Paul an apostle, not from man nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. And then verse 10 he says this, for, for do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I please men, I will not be a bond servant of Christ. So, mm -hmm. so he's giving us um, what leadership is and how the Holy Spirit functions. And then 11, he says, But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel was preached, was preached by me is not according to man, neither did I receive it from man, nor was I taught it. But it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. We have heard of my former conduct. Well, anyway, let me just stop there. But... Um, we see, we see, we see right there that he said he could not be the servant. So, of Christ, he, he can't function freely if he's if he's going through man. So, and, and, and if he and if he has fear of yeah. man, he yeah. can he he cannot <clears throat> freely serve Christ. You know, reason this came up because you know we had the early church, and then we went through a period of church history called the Dark Ages. Right. Now, how did we get into the Dark Ages? It's a, This is, to me, what led to the decline of the early church. The apostles were led mightily by the Holy Spirit. I think we can all agree with that. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, were used mightily by God to establish the church. Mm -hmm. Then after their death, carnal man came in, started usurping the authority and the position of the Holy Spirit and taking over what the Holy Spirit was supposed to do and took that authority upon himself, well, I don't think the Holy Spirit trimmed and pruned Michael enough. He needs some more pruning and trimming. <laughs> so I'm going to supply the trimming. Uh, I think he needs two years of prune, pruning and trimming. You know. <laughs> Well, what's so magic about two years, two years. of being out of being out Come on. office? Come on with that. I, I, you know, I know so many people, well, you did this, so there were four, you're out two years. So then you come back before the council right. and we'll determine whether or not there is still a call of God on your life. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought the Word said the call of God is without that recompense. That's right. right. You know, I, I can't... I can't well, license what God has called. That's right. right. And, and, and if, if if Peter failed and God restored him and then he preached the message of Pentecost three weeks after he'd fallen, denied and cursed God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then God uses him in one mighty fell swoop to bring 3,000 souls right. into right. the body of Christ, then how many souls are being lost because man puts a control right. over some other man that committed a sin. He had a bad when credential. God, when Jesus has already mm -hmm. paid for it. Yeah, he had a bad credential. Right. You know, yep. Peter would he have goes through the credentials to me. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, have you noticed, Brother Leroy, have you noticed when Jesus resurrected from the dead, he came out of the tomb and he told them, tell my disciple and Peter. And mm -hmm. Peter. He named it. So, Daddy God is our pattern, our example. Mm -hmm. You know that it, it, he's about relationship. And uh, so to those of you who are watching, you know, uh, you need to hear this. Now, I, I want to say something here also. That, uh, in Galatians 6, 1, Romans 14, 1, and Romans 15, 1, it talks about restoring, uh, uh, be strong to those who are weak in the faith. Right. You know, restore someone. Tom, Galatians 1, talking about, Watch yourself that you also may be tempted. Mm -hmm. But that happened because a lot of us ministers of the gospel, a lot of churches and, and leaders in the church have looked down and judged, and they, the same people, have fallen into sin. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we see that in ministers in the past, 
And so the moment we put fingers, you know, Galatians 6 1 is very important. It is in the spirit of bigness. But verse 3 on that chapter, it says, uh, if you think you're something when you are nothing, you deceive yourself. Right. So in the body of Christ, it's so important when we see someone fall and make a mistake, or somehow, I believe we need to do the opposite. You know, like Romans chapter 12, what Paul did, you know, there was a hand of judgment on, on Paul, but when we, uh, or, or not what Paul did, but what Stephen did, he says, forgive him. Mm -hmm. Basically, almost the same thing what Christ has said. So the hand of judgment of God, supposed to be in Paul, was taken out of the way because of the love that Stephen showed. Mm -hmm. And thank God that he did that. We, we have, what, two-thirds of the New Testament. <laughs> and so we never know the kind of people that, that we're dealing in the church. We give them hope. We give them grace, show mercy. You never know the impact, the influence that that man and woman, a couple, mm -hmm. men, women of God, can make an impact in the days and years to come. Right. But because of wrong, they call it discipline. Well, really, discipline is supposed to be discipleship. Mm -hmm. Empower them, encourage yes. them, exhort them. Let's overcome evil with good. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what the church is supposed to do. But in, in the church today, <clears throat> as we see it, and it, make, it splits the church, it makes a damage, puts scars on people, family will never go back to church. Why? Because we handle it so wrong. Mm -hmm. And guess what? And when that ministers or pastors and the leader of the church have, have been kicked out of the church, it brings damage outside the four walls of the sure. church. So they're going to pick so, it up and start mocking. Yes, right? domino effects, you know, So because there's no grace. Man's discipline in, in church is always law. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Never, wow, yeah. never, not grace, mm -hmm. but our example, the prodigal father, mm -hmm. it was grace and not uh, law. Spirit of gentleness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gentle and grace going to yes, his son, yes. doing, looking for him, running to him, having compassion yes. on him, uh, embracing him, kissing him, all of that before he ever repented. He demonstrated mm -hmm. grace to him. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful what yeah. you just said. Before there was Before repentance. Before yes. there was repentance, the father did all this. And then the son tried to, to tried to give his rehearsed speech, and the father would never let him say, what? I just want to be a hired service. He mm -hmm. got through all of it except where he said, I just want to be a hired servant, mm -hmm. and the father wouldn't let him say right. that. He cut him off right, right. there because... We're not hired servants, we're mm -hmm. sons. Mm -hmm. right. And if we're sons and brothers, you know, come on. Uh, but, you know, we want God to be the figurehead, but not the operating mm -hmm. head. Right. Yep. And, right. and, but, and we want to bring in civil authority, right. apply it to church discipline. Well, God will, you know, thank you for doing all the other, but we'll do this. Right. right. And people uh, that are watching right now, some of them even, and I can you just about sense it, or like, well, it would be total chaos if we right. did what you said. Right. No, it wouldn't be total chaos yeah. if you got civil authority out of the church. Right. Yeah. And you brought in true dominion right. and spiritual Ooh. authority. That's there's good. no chaos. Come there's on. no confusion. Yeah. That's it. Because the Holy Ghost, is he really the teacher? And I and I, I turned to this a minute ago and I kept feeling it, but God, I, now I know good. what God is saying. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13, which things also we speak. Let's back up so it makes sense. Yeah. Verse 12. Now we have received... Not the spirit of the world, but the spirit, capital S, which is of God. Right. That we might know the things which are freely given to us of God. Mm. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, not mm. in civil authority, right. but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, semicolon, which means I'm about to tell you how the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual wow. things with spiritual and that's how it moves in the church. If we try to take carnal authority and carnal discipline right. and carnal civil, yeah. and civil authority, and we we try, try to, to make it implement spiritual. that, right. it ain't going to work. And you can't make that spiritual. Uh -huh. You no. can't bring the old covenant, the law, yes. and grace, and try to put them together right. and make law spiritual. You can't do it. Uh -uh. Leave the law outside. Right. Forget about how bad you got hurt by that right. thing, right. and realize that the unity. And the show of unity and support and love will go farther in commanding that the world pays attention to what God's body is doing True. than disciplining them, making a headline, throwing them out of the place, or either ignoring that altogether. I, I was talking with a pastor friend of mine from South Carolina the other day, 
and we were discussing, I was telling him about our teaching. He had been online watching these teachings. What? And he was so impressed by it. And he said, you know, it doesn't really stop there, but the covering also protects them from sinning. Because mm -hmm. many of these guys can have an affair, can have yeah, uh, awesome. uh, accusations of homosexuality. Mm -hmm. And one particular pastor, and I'm not offending, I don't mean to offend you, I'm, I'm going to, but I don't mean to. One of them, wrapped, they wrap him in a, in a cloth and hold him up over the church and pronounce him king. Mm -hmm. This pastor in Atlanta. Yeah, and march him through the congregation well, as king I, because mm -hmm. they say he's under attack from the enemy because two men have come forward and said that he right. had... had relations with them right. and he and they revealed it on him and then he's also involved in some laundering money and some buying some casinos and gambling equipment and all these slot right. machines and all of that stuff is the world attacking him right. and so his covering I won't call his name because everyone would know him no, his don't. covering is in Dallas and his covering will say nothing against him only speak well of him and he's covering the sin and he's talking about right. hiding a multitude of sins. That's not what God meant yeah, no, when right. he said that. Yeah, right. He said, he didn't mean it that way. He's talking about if you forgive them, right. you forgive a brother, right. you know, that's whenever you're, you're right. hiding a multitude right. of sins. So I'm just, uh, the, my point is, dragging in this whole corporate structure and trying to discipline someone. And when you started the program off by saying, who gives you the authority to set someone down and what, at what scripture did you find that said one year, two years, right. 30 days? Wow. Yes. It's not here. Yeah. It's not here. Now, there's some issues where people, Paul talks about you getting puffed up. Right. He said, I'm going to, I'll am going unpuff you when I come there. He said, you got puffed up because right. I sent Timothy to you, and you wanted me to come because you already printed your brochures, and you had me as the guest right. speaker, and everybody was coming to see me, <laughs> and now you're not going to get the offering that you were going to get because oh, I'm no. sending my junior son, Timothy. Right. And he said, I'll deal with those things. And he also says, I'll deal with uh, Diotrephes in mm -hmm. the book of James. He right. says he right. likes to have the preeminence and he's throwing people out of the church. I'll deal with him when I get there. So there's going to be times whenever we have to discuss the things sure. that are going on sure. in the natural. But as far as a, a, a comrade falling and us trying to discipline that comrade or that person and use uh, secular civil authority to do it with, I think we're way over our head in some people. Well, you know, a, a lot of people are going to look at some of my comments and, and say, you know, that dude's just totally against church government. But I'm not. I'm not against scriptural-based God's government because it is of God. Absolutely. Right. But God speaks to whom? Right. He speaks to us individually. Right. He does. He does not speak to committees, mm -hmm. organizations, mm -hmm. boards, denominations. Mm -hmm. He said, "Well, where do you get that That's from?" Found right there, what you just said. True. If all you got to do is go to the Book of Revelation, he spoke to the pastors of the individual seven churches. Yes, he, did. he did not speak to the uh, body of, wow. of Jerusalem. Right. He did not speak to the Jerusalem Commission. Right. If he wanted to speak to a denomination or an organization or a board or a bigwig or whatever. Mm -hmm. He would wow. have spoken to the Jerusalem Commission, had them sent it out. He spoke to the individual seven pastors. Mm -hmm. So what is God going to do? He's going to speak to Michael. He's yes. going to speak to Alan. He's going to speak to you. He'll speak to us individually. Mm -hmm. But he's not, and he does it on an individual basis, but not to boards and everything else. So he's going to discipline us. He's going to prune us on an individual basis. Mm -hmm. The reason we got to the position of where we were is because we were subjecting ourselves to his pruning to start with. And we just kept on getting out in mm -hmm. left field, left field, left yep. field. And, 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 you know, over the cliff we went. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think but I'm not against church government, but it's just who does God speak to? He speaks to us individually. It's really important, too, to understand the difference between church and kingdom right. and that, and to understand that it's okay to have a local church and a structure, right. but do not confuse it with something God's doing in your city. Right. That's something a man is doing in your city, and mm -hmm. he, whether he's got a big crowd or a little crowd, a man is orchestrating that, and a man is, is, is dealing with all that, and don't confuse that with God. And even if you go there and you feel good and you have, you're being fed and all of those things, do not confuse that with something God's doing. Because I promise you, the church that Jesus built looks like the book of Acts. 
They right. get healed on the way to church. There's miracle signs and wonders spilling out into the street. They get confused for being drunk. 5,000 added to the church daily, such as should be saved. These are things that are happening in the church that Jesus built. I thought he dies with the apostle. I thought it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, when somehow when John died, for some wow, reason, what kind of spirit was that? All of that, his power was no long, was not able to last longer than the lifespan of John, mm. according to some doctrines. <laughs> I thought it was, I thought the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. If that spirit dwells in you, <laughs> it'll also quicken your mortal Ooh, body. Man. Is that a script? It is a script. <laughs> wow. You know, uh, I was looking for a scripture and uh, can't put my hands on it, and one of you may can help me with it, but. Give me a scripture that says uh, to try that we are to try the spirits. Mm -hmm. yeah, first John four verse one. First John four one. Mm -hmm. I was looking at First John one four. Uh, Beloved, believe every believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, mm -hmm. wow. because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Man cannot give me the ability to try the spirits. Mm -hmm. It's the Holy Spirit working in us that's going to have that spirit of discernment, which I think is the most important gift a child of God can have in the last days mm -hmm. is a gift of discernment. Right. If we can discern what God is doing wow. and then what he's speaking us to discern what the world is doing. Mm -hmm. So we've got to have discernment in from the, uh, what the world is trying to do and what the enemy is trying to do against us and discern what God is doing and what he wants us to do to combat it. With the gift of discernment, I cannot try the spirits without the gift of discernment. Right. Right. And I cannot have the gift of discernment from man. There's no way man can give you that. Man mm -hmm. cannot give me that, I don't think. No. I, 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 I just don't see it. So, you know, how is... How then am I going to tell a brother, you've got to do this? My discernment, what it boils down to, did not come from the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we are doing that, punishing our fellow brother for a sin and taking me, putting me in the place of Jesus, because Jesus is the one that paid the penalty for all sins. Mm -hmm. I'm on, uh, I'm on bad ground. Amen. I'm on bad ground. Uh, think about what we said tonight. Might want to watch it again. Might want to get that tape. Uh, because we probably challenge you in some areas that people won't normally challenge you. But if you continue to listen to Not Without Blood, we hope the Holy Spirit will be real in your life and give you revelation on each and everything we've talked about. May God bless and thank you for being with us. We invite you to join us each and every study to grow in the knowledge of the finished work of Christ. Once again, that number is 256-227-5735.